Let's be honest. We all have things laying around the house that are completely useless. That New Year's resolution treadmill, your entire DVD collection, kids, and more importantly, your Chromebook. Luckily, some of these things can be repurposed into something a bit more useful. And that's what we're gonna do today. Let's take those kids and send them to the coal mine. Let's take a look at that Chromebook and turn it into a decent home server. Okay, I know all you Chromebook fans out there are screaming at me right now and ready to smash that dislike button for my little joke, but let me make it clear. I think Chromebooks are amazing devices for what they are. Lightweight, affordable, secure options that provide a solid web browsing and productivity experience. With that said though, once your kid no longer needs it for their remote learning class, they usually just sit around and collect dust. So what we're gonna do today is take our Chromebook and utilize the built-in Linux developer feature to run Docker and host a bunch of common home lab services. The specific device I'll be using is uh, this HP model with a uh, dual core four thread i3-8130U with four gigabytes of RAM and a 128 gigabyte SSD. Obviously the specs here aren't gonna bring the boys to the yard, but for the $150 I paid for it, it's honestly pretty solid. There are two ways you can go about running Linux on your Chromebook, the easy way and the masochist way. We're gonna go with the easy way today, so all you masochists, feel free to head over to my OnlyFans. The easy way involves going into the settings under the Developers tab and turning on the Linux development environment. This is supported natively on all Chromebooks produced after 2019, but even if yours is a little old, it still may work. Once you enable it, a dialog box will pop up and guide you through the rest of the process, which takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Just enough time to check out my affiliate links down in the description below where you can find awesome deals on Samsung drives, Anchor Power Solutions, and weekly PC gaming deals from Best Buy. Also, if you utilize my Amazon affiliate links and purchase literally anything after clicking them, I get a kickback, so those help me out a ton. Okay, after Linux is installed, you'll be able to access the CLI using the terminal application. From here, you can do all sorts of Linux things like install your favorite apps, run Steam, deal with permission issues, and more. But what we're gonna do is go ahead and get Docker installed. To get Docker installed, simply follow the guide for installing it on a Debian-based system, which includes installing a few prerequisites, setting up the repository, and then installing the Docker engine. I'll go ahead and link the official guide down in the description below. So there it is, we have Docker running. We're ready to throw in some hard drives, set up a NAS, spin up a reverse proxy, and not quite. While we are running Linux on our Chromebook, it's running as a containerized image within Chrome OS, so we are still limited in some of the aspects like storage and networking. Let's start with storage. As of right now, I don't believe there's any way to directly access external drives in Linux that are plugged into your Chromebook, so just because of that, I wouldn't really recommend trying to set up any kind of RAID solution on here. You can, however, pass through the file system on the drive itself to Linux and access the files on there, so it's not all bad. To do this, I'll just be using my external NVMe drive because it's small and doesn't require external power. You can use whatever you want. If you wanna plug in a big old external USB dock that holds four hard drives, go for it. So to get the file system or a specific directory passed through, you'll wanna go into the Files app in Chrome OS and right click that drive or directory and select Share with Linux. Once you do this, you'll be able to access the files from that directory within Linux under the appropriate mount directory. In my case, you'll see that I have my external drive mounted under mount Chrome OS travel, and boom, there it is. Similarly, you can mount network drives, so if you already have a NAS and want to access files from that via Linux, simply create a network share in Chrome OS by going to Files, Network File Shares, and create your mapping. Passing that through Linux is the same as before, except this time it's mounted in mount Chrome OS and with a long, unintelligible string, so yeah. All right, we have storage set up. Time to actually create some services. We already have Docker installed, so you're free to do everything through the CLI, but I'm a fan of using Portainer as my Docker orchestrator, so we're gonna install that. Let me know down in the comments if you're a regular vanilla Docker CLI user, or if you like to use 
a dedicated orchestrator like Portina or Rancher. So let's go ahead and plug all of this in actually so that I can show you the Portainer installation experience and get some services up and running. All right, so here we are in Chrome OS. I have my Linux terminal up and running. We're gonna go ahead and get Portainer installed. Luckily, it's extremely easy. Just go to the Portainer website and they have installation guides and walkthroughs and luckily it's like two lines. So I'm just gonna copy this and you're going to have to run this as sudo. So sudo paste. Boom, we have our Portainer data volume created. Next, we have to download and install the container. Again, copy, paste. And just like that, it's installed. If we go ahead and look at our containers we have running, there it is, Portainer running. So we should be able to go to HTTPS 9443 on the IP address of my Chromebook and find it. Is what I would say if this was a normal process, however, in the containerized version of Linux that Chrome OS runs, you have to do port forwarding to get your ports forwarded from your actual Chrome OS instance into your containerized Linux instance. Don't worry, it's not difficult. Go to your settings and within developers, go into your Linux development environment, down to port forwarding. And here you can see I already have a couple set up and the one we want for Portainer is 9443. Basically, this is saying when we try to access our IP for our Chrome OS and access this port, pass it directly through to the Linux instance, which is exactly what we want. So now you'll be able to access this off of any computer within your LAN. Since we are on the actual Chromebook itself, we can just go to localhost, boom. That's, yeah, that's fine with me. It's the first time running, so we are just going to set up the account. I don't remember what I just typed, password, and boom, just like that, there's our local Docker instance running. If we go in here, we should see one container. We do, it's Portainer. So we probably actually wanna run some more containers, so let's go ahead and do that. You can go into app templates and pick from some of the ones that come packaged with Portainer. You can also create your own custom templates, which I like to do because I like using Docker Compose, or you can simply just go in the CLI and run a standard Docker container creation. So the first one I'll show you is one of the most common things people wanna get home servers for, and that is Plex. So what we're gonna do is go into custom templates, add custom template. We are gonna call this one Plex. I don't care about any of this right now. And here is where you will paste the Docker Compose text. All right, paste. So what we're doing here is basically saying, yes, this is the Plex container we wanna pull and run, or image rather. We wanna name it Plex. And the important thing is these volumes. So the config, we'll just put in a base configuration folder. And the media, we want to access this on our external drive. So remember, it was stored in Mount Chrome OS, Removable, Travel, and we created a directory in there just called Plex, and we're just gonna put media in there to load into our Plex instance. So this is how I run it. You don't have to use this exact configuration. You can set it up to access it off of a NAS or a named volume or whatever you want. I, I don't care. But simply go down here, create custom template, it is created, click back on it, and deploy the stack. It's gonna go ahead and download the image, spin up the container, and hopefully you get a nice green successful message up there. And we did, so let's go into containers. Okay, so here you see Plex is running. That means we can simply go up to a browser and we'll go to localhost 32400, which is the web GUI for Plex uh, slash web and it should take us through the setup process. So what we're gonna do is go down into libraries and we didn't set up any initially, but we're going to add one now. Go to add library. This is going to be movies. All I did was put one movie on here just to show you for demo purposes. Yeah, this looks fine. Browse for media folder. And remember we passed that through as slash media. So if we go in here, you should see, yep, there it is, 22 Jump Street, add, add library. And it shouldn't take too long to do all the metadata considering it's one movie. So we go back to Plex and just like that, 22 Jump Street. And I can go in here and play. Obviously I can't play very much of it considering I don't wanna get copyright struck. 
Strucketh. All right, you can see the movie is playing. I will minimize that. We will go into top, which I have running. And you can see we're not really pinning the CPU too much. This thing is handling obviously one encoding stream at a time, but obviously you're not expecting a Chromebook to handle multiple 4K streams at the same time. But this goes to show you can set up Plex and you can run it on a Chromebook. All right, so we have Plex running, but chances are you want to run more than one thing. So let's go ahead and install something else. We're gonna go into app templates and another service that I like is called a file browser and it is packaged by default in Portainer. Basically, it's a web-based file browser for some network attached storage. So like I said, I wouldn't rely on this to be a dedicated NAS or anything, but a simple place to host some network attached storage, obviously as a backup, but yeah, you can certainly do it. So we'll call this file browser. Bridge network is fine. That's it, deploy the container. Obviously in advanced options, we can set where we want to store everything, but again, it would be the same thing as Plex. We would store it in the mounted uh, directory for our external hard drive. So it's gonna go ahead and start up. Let's wait for it. Okay, it is done and it is at 49157. Remember, you have to port forward on your Chrome OS network to get to your Linux network. So again, go into developers, Linux development environment, Port forwarding, add, and what was it? 49157. And we will call this one File brow Browser. Add. Okay, if we go to localhost, 49157. File Browser, cool. Uh, I don't, uh, I think it's just, or is it admin password? Okay, I think it's admin, admin. Okay, there we go. Yes, thank you. Thanks for the heads up, Google. All right, and it is pretty bare bones. It's not very sexy, but that is okay. We can go ahead and create a new folder. Maybe we wanna share this with family. So we'll call that the family folder. And once you're in here, you can move files around and add them and do whatever you want. Maybe we wanna create a new file and call this one passwords, password. And the password, the master password for the entire family is subscribe, sub, subscribe to Raid Owl. All right, save. Neat, just like that, we have a password file and we can go in here actually and share it. If we want, you can set a set amount of time you wanna share it for. You can set a password on it and then you can send that link to basically anybody in your LAN. And if you set this up to be accessed over the entire internet and from anywhere in the world, then that link will work as well. So it's a pretty cool little service you can run. It's lightweight and pretty much does everything you need it to do in a basic file sharing service. And yeah, if we check our top, we are barely using any CPU resources at all. So again, just because you run some services in Docker doesn't mean they have to be heavy services. You can run a crap ton of lightweight services with some very underpowered hardware if you keep things within reason. So yeah, go wild, install whatever containers you want. Just keep in mind your RAM and CPU limits and just monitor them every once in a while to make sure you're not pinning everything to 100%. And if you're not, then you're good. So just like that, we have a pretty useful little home server on our old Chromebook. Now, would I recommend you go out and buy a Chromebook just to do this? Absolutely not. I could already hear you guys running to the comments section to tell me a $50 Optiplex from Craigslist would be a better option. And yeah, probably, but that's not what this is about. This is about repurposing old hardware that wasn't being used and extending its life by hopefully a few years. Another cool thing about this is that it still functions as a Chromebook while running Linux in the background. So you can browse the web, have conference calls, and write up your memoirs or whatever you'd wanna do on a Chromebook, just like you would on any other normal Chromebook. So again, would I recommend you go buy one for this? No. Would I recommend you do this with your existing Chromebook? Absolutely. Now it's time for comment of the week. Where is my phone? I'm an idiot. I'm literally using my phone as a teleprompter and I was looking for it. This comment comes from RS Genus one on my uh, Ryzen 5700G versus Intel i5-12600K video. He says, I don't wanna see your bald face. I want to see the benchmarks and games side by side. 
Yeah, comment of the week isn't always the best comment. So if you're gonna hate on my videos, at least do it accurately because I have these exact things in the video with timestamps and chapters down below. So come on, if you're gonna hate, do it right. And just for the record, my face isn't bald at all. It's pretty hairy. My head though, accurate. Yeah, my head's bald, not my face. Okay, that is all I have for you today. If you like this video or the shape of my head, please drop a like down below. If you wanna see more content like this, feel free to subscribe. Let me know down in the comments if you plan on doing this with your Chromebook and your experience along the way. Huge shout out to my YouTube members and Patreons. You guys either really like me or you really hate money. Either way, you guys are awesome. If you wanna join the crew, links are down in the description or if you just wanna come hang out in the Discord, Link is also down in the description. Come do that. If you made it this far in the video, I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.